What's up? Thank you for joining. This is our first episode, obviously, of G Live. First of all, I want to thank the one and only Cobra Tate, Talisman Tate, and all of the War Room. And we have a tremendous man who's going to be joining us. Thanks, guys, for guys already joining in. Appreciate that. Uh, just waiting for our guest, Ian Barreto, to join us and share some some gems on kettlebell training and, and all and its many benefits. What's up, Kevin? What's up, Chris? Appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, we often say, if you know, you know. So um, with that, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're going to share a lot of great insights with different men of, of purpose, of consequence uh, within this network called The War Room. Uh, appreciate you guys. What's up, Diego? Appreciate you joining. Right. Again, my, you know, should have probably introduced myself first. My name is Fabian Baez. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get the my name in my handle, but that's my name for those that don't know. And I'll be your host for G Live. All right. Um, obviously, as we're going through this, not, we're not going to be too long on this IG Live, maybe roughly about a half hour or so. Uh, but any questions that you have, you can drop them in as we start the talk and we'll try to get to them. You know, we just want to get right to it and share some really great insights with, with the, the listeners. And of course, it'll be recorded so you guys can check it out afterwards as well. What's up, Brian? Let's see, Brian Tucker's joined in. And, uh, you know, I've trained with, uh, had the pleasure, as, as many G's have, of training with, with Ian and sparring with him. And it's, it's quite the experience, and you, you grow a lot from it, as you do when you, when you surround yourself with exceptional people. Uh, you, it, it just pushes you to, to grow, right? You don't have a choice. You're, you're either, you can only go one way or the other, right? So uh, I just thought it'd be fitting to, for us to talk about developing strength, kettlebell strength. What's up, Ian? You ready? Let's see here. Okay, here we go. What's up, Josh? Oh, perfect. There we go. go. All right. It's going well. Going well, my brother. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Glad, glad you could join us. Excited for this. Dude, same here. Same here. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so let's we'll see what happens. We got it. It's going to be, it's going to go great. You know how yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was giving, what's up, Mike? I was giving, giving guys a little bit, you know, having the pleasure of training and sparring with you. And uh, but let's let's go back a little bit because I know we're not we don't have much time on here. Uh, you're you're originally from the West Coast, right? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Southern California. Uh, grew up in like Anaheim, Orange County area, and I started going to college out at Fullerton College, and that's where I first got into fitness and strength and conditioning. Um, so I worked at uh, you know worked out of Rain Training Center as an MMA facility back then. Um, working on the front desk and then being able to kind of shadow and watch how they were doing things. And they were attached to like a private training facility next door uh, called Cutting Edge. And so I got to, you know, pick the brain of uh, the owner of Cutting Edge, Todd Norman, a little bit, a um, couple of times. And then one of my mentors was the one uh, who's a football coach at Fulton College. He got me in, you know, in those spots. And then when I went off to school at Montana, um, kind of helped you know, push me towards, you know, point me in the direction where I needed to be going. And then that's where I started my strength and conditioning career and uh, did that for six years, starting off at Montana and then bouncing around the country and got to put a lot of miles on the road and a lot of time in the weight room. And then, uh, right. yeah, decided it was yep. it's time to get out of that. Yeah. And you, were you, when you were doing that, because I, I, I gravitated to you because I'm a, a football coach, coach mm -hmm. at the high school, college level. So did you, coach uh, uh, the football team sports as well or yeah so I mean if you name an NCAA sport odds are I probably worked with it 
so football, basketball, baseball, softball, men's and women's soccer, uh, men's and women's ice hockey, men's and women's crew, mm-hmm. tennis, uh, track and field, you know, all the distance, throwers, everything in between. Right. Um, yeah, there's pretty much every single athlete out there I've worked with. Um, yeah. or sorry, every single sport, I should say. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Um, now, so your fitness – Fitness has always been a part of your life, then, basically. No, not at all. No? I actually no, I didn't. I, I didn't lift my first weight until I was. I think my parents bought me like a big five barbell set when I was like fourteen, fifteen. I lifted that like no, three no, times. As a teen, yeah, as a teen. Yeah, you know, oh, I had no idea what I was doing. I literally, I worked out with it like three times, and I didn't touch a weight until I was nearly eighteen. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's when I first actually like. Did like a went to the gym and actually had like a weight program that I followed and um and but before then I had I had no clue what I was doing. It was always something I was like, Oh yeah, I should I wanna learn how to lift weights. Like I think I could I could do that. Like it looks good. I I, I could be okay, good at that. Or in adult life more or less. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean I started realistically I started probably I guess now it'd be almost thirteen and a half, fourteen years ago. So like now now I've been doing it for a little bit. Um sure. Sure. But, but yeah, right. it was that was pretty. I, I was new to it. I really had no clue what I was doing when I started. I had it, I put it off for so long. Um, you know, football. Ironically enough, was the one sport that I never played. Uh, okay, you played yeah. others. Yeah, so I played. I dabbled. I played a lot of hockey. Played soccer, basketball. Okay. Um, and I got into like all the X game stuff. So a lot of BMXing, um, okay. some dirt biking, that yeah. kind of deal, and right. then dabbled with mixed martial arts for a couple of years when I was a teenager. And then I got into lifting and got away from it. And then finally got back into martial arts, uh, back in 2019. So, right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously there's so many guys that are on here that we're all better what you do in, in terms of fitness and combat in talk of, in terms of kettlebell training, how mm-hmm. did that come out? And, and if you could, a little bit on the difference and benefits to that. Yeah, absolutely. So when when I was in college drinking and conditioning, we dabbled with some kettlebell swings here and there, but nothing we never really did a lot of it. And the real actual like first time I ever used kettlebells was doing some bottomless up presses for shoulder rehab. And then when I got out of that and I joined a commercial gym as far as a trainer. Um, so I became a trainer at a commercial gym here in Las Vegas and I was looking around trying to say, okay, so like who are the other good trainers? Who do I want to like associate with? Cause I know like a lot of personal trainers in the fitness industry are just the, the dog shit, the trash. And I was looking around like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, they're doing stuff straight out of like the, you know, NASA book or whatever. There's nothing like they don't actually really have like thought behind what they're doing. Yeah. And they're, and they're not good coaches. Like I recognize really good coaching. And it's something, one of the things that took me to, uh, you know, I follow like uh, Coach Barry Robinson. And one of the things that attracted me wasn't the boxing content so much. I was like, okay, that's cool. But how he talked about it, his coaching style, and as he calls it, his linguistics. The way that he was coaching was extremely powerful and effective. And I was like, oh, shit, he's a smart dude. Um, The way that he's doing it is really smart in his approach. And so I was looking around, and I found there's one trainer who was, he was just from afar. I was like, oh, that's a good coach. All right, I'll, I'll hang out with him. And he was big into kettlebells. And so from there, him and I, you know, we started talking. And, you know, one day I saw him just grabbing a 36 kilo bell and he's just don't, don't, don't. Like, I mean, it looked like a piston. And he's overhead pressing that thing. I'm like, Jesus, okay. Dude's really strong. All right, good for him. He's built, whatever. And then one day he came over and, you know, I was playing around with like some, some kettlebell pressing. And uh, he goes, oh, when are you going to press that? And I'm like, dude, I just did like fucking 13 reps. Like we talked about, he said, no, 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 you got to bring a hand below your chin. Like he had movement standards. And I was like, oh, nobody's really hit me with like movement standards for this movement. I'm used to it for like a squat or like deadlift and one of the close forever. But for like overhead pressing, oh, okay. Like other than straighten your arm at the top. I'm like, that's it. And uh, all of a sudden it got way harder. I was like, oh, okay. He's onto something. So then we started collaborating and, you know, he taught me how to do swings and then, you know, pointed me down the kettlebell road. And I started doing more and more of it. And what I found was my joints felt a lot better. I didn't feel quite as beat up. Um, 
I was getting in really good shape. My conditioning was through the roof. I felt strong. I had what they call it the what the hell effect where, you know, I could just go and like random things that, you know, you pick up like a case of waters, right? It's kind of awkward and bulky and, you know, funky. And I go and like, you know, pick up random things like that. They're just like, oh, this feels lighter than it used to be. Like, what happened? You know, what the hell? What the hell? Like, where did that come from? And so that just, at that point I was hooked and, you know, I've really been going down it and training consistent with it for, you know, now going on, yeah, three and a half years. Right, right. And and you're helping a lot of people. You have a tremendous the tactical kettlebell mm -hmm. uh, uh, teach, you know, if you want to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah, so I made a tactical kettlebell strength because I realized that there's there's a lot of you know content out there as far as you know people will make you know videos of like oh here's like a tip here a tip there you know this is how you should be doing a swing and there's a lot of fluff around it but nobody really breaks down and I didn't I haven't found any good you know concise courses that break down hey this is how you do your basic movements yeah and here's a program to go with it because you can tell someone, oh, this is how you do it, but then they don't really know what to do with that. And tactical kettlebell strength came about because there wasn't anything that did both. So, you know, the videos, I made them short so that people can rewatch them and they can constantly pull stuff out of it. Right. And the program, I made the program lengthy, right? There's different cycles and there's progress checks built in. So you can make sure that, you know, you're seeing the improvement. You're seeing, you know, your conditioning go up. You're seeing your strength go up. Um, you're seeing the progress along the way and you know, it totals out that there's no way that you can really do that program and follow that course and you won't dramatically change your physique, your fitness, you know, and just everything about your life. Um, there's a lot packed into it and you know, it was designed to be that way where it puts someone in a spot where when you finish it, you can literally do whatever you want. You want to try a new sport. You can go do that. You want to, repeat parts of the program because you know you want to focus on a specific strength you could do that you want to develop more kettlebell programs you know try them out go for you know different things learn how to do snatches whatever it might be you can do that as well you know it builds a fitness base and you know changes someone's body composition in six months right and it's a complete, uh, video program right i mean that's awesome yeah. Yeah. So there's, I think it's like 12 videos um, that are in there and you can watch the whole thing. It's less than two hours, you know, yeah. because like I said, it's meant to be fast. It, nobody, if someone really wants to hear like all the science behind why it works and does this and this and this and the biomechanics and everything like in detail, you know, hit me up. Yeah. We can, you know, yeah. we can book something and I'll go into that stuff with you. But realistically, like 90% of people, 98% of people, they don't care. They don't really need to know that. They just need to know how do I do this right? And then how can I get something out of it? Do right. that. Great. We're happy. Get my workout. Get out right. of here. Yeah. For someone that, for someone listening that, you know, we have a lot of familiar uh, men in here, but in case someone's mm -hmm. watching that isn't, doesn't know where to find the, the, the uh, program, where can they go? Yeah. So if they go to my gum road, uh, I think it's iclarity.gumroad and programs on there um, so you know you can always buy it on there or if you uh want to pay in crypto let me know and we can set something like that up uh, just slide in the dms uh, yeah you know on instagram or telegram yeah i claudia uh I, you said i claudia.gumroad yeah i claudia.gumroad okay uh, but definitely yeah obviously anyone that's watching this now or afterwards you know, dm and asked about that. There's a concept mm -hmm. that you talk about in there, and I've, like I said, I've had the benefit when I first started. Like, it was almost a year ago. It was almost a year yeah. ago and stuff. Yeah. When the kettlebells and when the third kettles, and first time doing that. Yeah. But say about after you've trained with kettlebells, it is different. I mean, it, feel it I felt it in my hands and my forearms. Like, you know, the handles, right? Because it's, it's dirty. It forces you. It really forces you to become stronger. You know, so mm -hmm. it's something that you talk about in the, in the course, uh, energy harvesting. And, mm -hmm. and well, we've had discussions about this. Can you talk? Can you elaborate a little bit on that point? 
Yeah. Yeah. So without necessarily giving away all of it, essentially it's you're, you're stimulating your body so that when you finish your workout, you actually feel refreshed, right? You walk out of the gym and you feel better than when you walked in. Um, there's a saying that I like to teach guys is, you know, train to be able to train tomorrow. So you should walk out of the gym feeling better than when you walked in. You should feel refreshed. You should feel energized. And the workouts are designed to work in a way where even if like you're out of breath a little bit at the very, very end, by that five minute mark, when you're, you know, cleaned everything up and you're walking out the door, you're feeling energized and refreshed. And it stems from a few different things. Um, but one of the main principles is that, you know, and you mentioned this before, strength and stress are poured out of the same cup. And so what you're doing when you train is you're providing your body with a little bit of stress to force it to adapt so that it can actually use that stress for good rather than looking at stress as like, oh, I'm stressed out. I feel awful. This is the worst. It's like, no, like all this stress is actually giving me free energy, right? It's pushing me forward because it's driving me. It's enabling me to become stronger quicker. And now because I'm becoming stronger quicker, now I can do more. And that's the way that, you know, it's an upward spiral. It's compounding effect as you go through the program. Right. I think anyone that's trained with, with Ian and many of us, uh, maybe many uh, are probably on this live right now. You can attest to that. Like you, you put in the work, but then when you walk away from it, you know, I think about, you know, in Atlanta, you know, just walking away and you feel, you feel better. Now you, yeah. you're a component of working out, under the sun, right? Uh, outdoors, mm -hmm. sun, right? Barefoot. Oh, yeah. About that. What are the benefits of that? So the main thing, uh, the barefoot's the biggest one because when you're barefoot, you – what up, Tig? I see you in here. Right, when, uh, <laughs> when, when you're barefoot, what happens is you can actually grab the ground. So if you think about, like, how your hands and your feet are made up, you have a lot of muscles in your feet, and, you know, we don't use them as much – as we used to because yeah we wear shoes and i'm also like anyone who follows me on social media knows that you know i i roast people who wear who don't wear shoes out in public like the swine feet epidemic so i'm a big proponent of shoes don't get me wrong i love shoes shoes are the greatest i have like two dozen pairs like please everyone wear your shoes however when you're training <laughs> if you can go in your socks or your shoes what that does is that gives your body more feedback from the ground. You want to be training on a firm surface where you're able to put force into the ground because everything about training is you're generating force and you're moving mass, right? And if you have a solid base and you're connected to the ground, then you can, you know, generate more force. Ergo, you become stronger, faster. So that's where I look at the, uh, you know, the difference of, you know, not – not wearing shoes when you train and things like that. And I'm a big fan of training outside if you can. Now, granted, I live in Las Vegas, so training outside right about, I mean, it's early June. So from now until like mid-September, training outside in the sun is fucking miserable. Like you got to put a handle, you got to cover up the handle on the bells and all that stuff because it's 110 degrees outside and the sun's beating is down on you. Like early in the morning, is it a little more bearable? Yeah, it's more bearable, but by like by seven, eight o'clock, like you're you're already going to be burning. Like it's it's fast. We're in a desert, you know. Okay. Um, but that being said, you put on some sunscreen. You know, maybe you work out in the shade, but you're outside. That works too. Right. Um, here here at my house, we train in the garage every afternoon, right. and you know the sun is beating down on the garage door, but it's not directly coming in. So it's usually about ninety degrees or so in the garage every day, um, and that that makes a big difference too when. You know, when I was down in uh, Guadalajara for an event uh, back in April, you know, we're training outside for, you know, hours at a time. And, yeah, the sun was at UV 11 and it was 90 degrees. And everybody was, like, bathing themselves in sunscreen and all that stuff. You know, it's doable. It's just you got to be, you know, be careful about it. Um, right. And we weren't doing a ton of bell training, which makes a difference because you put kettlebells out in the sun for that long, like, those handles, they get so hot. You're going to – it's ugh, bad news. Right. Right. Yeah. So – but no, the, the, the energy as far as being able to grab the ground and the energy you get from having the sun, you know, kind of shining on you, you're getting your vitamin D in and it's refreshing. Like yeah. everybody feels better when they're out in the sunlight. Daylight is good for you. 
Yeah. So it's why not compound that? Why not enjoy your training while you're in the sun, enjoying the daylight? You know, I don't know if Alan is still in the room, but you know, that's why everybody's so miserable up in Scotland. I mean, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Any more... <laughs> uh, what, what's that? They need more sun out there, right? Yeah, you know, you, you need the sunlight. You know, that's the when uh, every time fall comes around and you see the chicks that post inspirational quotes on Instagram talking about, you know, they have, was it seasonal affective disorder, whatever it is? It's like, yeah, it's life is sad when you don't have daylight. I agree. Right. Now, for yeah. those that know Ian, he's tremendous in terms of. He talked a little bit, of, you know, about the kettlebell training, but also in terms of combat. You know, we learn a lot from him. Talk about a little bit about the importance, brother, of, of combat and, and training and respect. Yeah. So. There's a nuance to it, but for me, the biggest thing about the, you know, the combat training, as we say, um, or it's really just martial arts in general, is the most successful successful martial artists have a mastery mindset, where they look to they're looking to master a skill, and when you get really good at mastering a skill, it carries over to everything else in your life. So you build discipline, you build attention to detail. And you build, you know, a mindset of you're looking to be the absolute best that you can be. You know, that's what it really drives you towards. And, you know, that's, it's something that is, tends to be lost in a lot of places that, you know, people are like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good at that. And, you know, it's going to be great. But they're not looking, you know, for their own gratification to be, you know, masters of a skill. And for me, that's more where it comes it down is, you know, the martial arts is a place where you can develop mastery and control and it's confidence because it lets you go out into the world and know that, you know, odds are I'm going to be okay. Like if something happens, you know, I'm always trying to be, you know, situationally aware and whatnot. And, you know, the best way to avoid bad situations is avoid bad situations. You know, bad things don't happen if you avoid the badness. But sometimes things can't help be helped, you know, and if you know, if you have that confidence and the ability to perform under pressure, you know, that's where, you know, you can be a master under pressure and the kettlebell training and, you know, martial arts that go hand in hand in that regard, they feed into one another. And to me, it's, it's just something that, especially for men, like you just got to do. You know, and there's days where, like, you may not feel like it, but you just, you do it anyways because it's it's just part of who you got to be. And it, it makes your whole life better. And I can say, yeah. Tig, if you're still on here, I've said this to you a thousand times. Well, guys, you know, record, on the record, you guys have helped me grow and become what you said about mastery, developing confidence, not coming from a... a System martial arts, you know, like, like, not anything recently, and just the training, and then and then who you train with, right? You're not mm -hmm. with some jerk that's gonna take advantage of you. You know what I mean? It's, 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 gonna try to, it's an ego trip. It's someone that's gonna push, you, that's gonna test you, that's gonna make you be better, and that's mm -hmm. what it is. And my first time sparring was was, was with Ian, and you know I was, I, I mean I admit I had butterflies in my son the night before, but I. Knew, I you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the opportunity is there. You're, you're there with a pro. You're there with someone who's gonna do it the right way and work with you. And and I and and you know, granted, I mean, I still have a ways to go. You know, but it, it, I knew that just doing it and 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 seeing what it is and going through it. Okay, I, but I did. It I grew from that experience. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I thank you again for that. You know what I mean? And and, and also yeah. take just that's what it's about. It's it, it's growing and that self mastery. And, and knowing that, yeah, you're not going around, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see who I can knock out, but you walk through the world differently when you have that yeah. training. You yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. And, you know, no, it's it's a big part of, you know, the the respect that you give guys because, you know, that first time when we sparred, you know, almost a year ago in Atlanta, you know, there was never a point where, you know, I was looking to, 
you know, because I, I know there's an experience, you know, differential there. So it's a matter of, all right, let's see, like, you know, let's push Fabian to his, you know, to his limits and get him comfortable under pressure. You know, it's a different type of pressure. But there's, there's never a point where, like, once, you, once you're calm with that, you realize, like, oh, I'm not actually, like, I'm not going to die. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to get hurt. This is just really, really hard. Yeah. And you, you just got to overcome that hurdle. And it, it's like doing anything else that you don't want to do. Once you get started, that first step, everything else becomes easier because, like, oh, yeah, this actually this isn't so bad, you know. And that's, that's the big, you know, again, it goes back to that confidence that it builds. And it's just a necessity. It's something you have to do. You have to, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you do, like you said, you got to do it with the right people and in the right setting, because if, you know, there's a lot of places out there that, you know, are, it's just, it's, it's a trash quality, you know, and there's times where you find, and for me, you know, coming up through strength and conditioning coaching, where I was able to find good coaches and I knew yeah. what good coaching looked like. When I find good coaches, I'm like, okay, I can work with that person. Like, cause I'm going to learn something, but also universally good coaches they care and they want to see the people that they're working with get better and they're going to make sure that they put those people in situations where they're setting them up for success there's a chance of failure but they're setting them up towards success where you know it's an overwhelming odds and what i always tell my you know, my clients that i've worked with and athletes that i've worked with is you know i'm going to set you up for success and I'm not going to have you do anything that I honestly think you're more likely to fail at than you are to succeed. Because then at that point, I'm clearly, I'm not being productive. I'm not actually helping you. But if I'm putting you in situations where you have to step up and you know elevate your game and become a little bit better, you're going to win. To me, that's what you should be doing. That's what a good coach does. Right. Absolutely. And and you do that for sure. And I think, you know, we, we have thousands of guys that will attest. So yeah. now, we got a few minutes here, but uh, yep. remember, you know, Ian does a lot of things. He's a super talented, super bright guy, but he's also like the worldwide brand ambassador for Crystal Martini. We got to talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. Of course. The, 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 the brand is strong. strong. We got, we got the heat check. Yeah. You guys train hard, but you got to you play hard. You got to have fun. Ian. Yeah. Like, got guys from all across the globe sending in their reviews and stuff like that. Like, how did that talk about the Espresso Martini? What, what is it with the Espresso Martini? Uh, come about? <laughs> all right. It, it's, it's astonishingly simple. I love coffee, and I sometimes enjoy booze. And so uh, the Espresso Martini is like the perfect, you know, the, the perfect combination of the two. <laughs> I mean, for a while, so for a while, legitimately in the mornings, like I'll just do Bailey's and coffee and, okay. you know, which people have looked at me like Bailey's in the morning, like you're going to work. I'm like, yeah. And like, <laughs> we're just, <laughs> this is just what we do. <laughs> like there's, it's, it's, it, there's, there's nothing here to actually do anything. Like what are you talking about? There's, there's fucking, there's more booze in, I mean, like. I don't even know. I don't even know what to compare it to. It doesn't even like rate. But yeah. So like Bay was in coffee for a while. And then uh, I was at a restaurant. It was back in 2019, I think is maybe earlier. And I saw they had an espresso martini on the menu. I'm like, well, booze and coffee, like sign me up. And last year, it, last year was really when it took off because we were, I was in, uh, I was in Miami in may and that was when it kind of like first started to like spread a little bit mm -hmm. and we're at the cadillac hotel at the bar um and i was exhausted it'd been like a long week with this massive event i've been run ragged and we're hanging out at the hotel you know in the lobby bar and i'm like we're gonna be here for a while i need some coffee in me and i need some booze let's get some espresso martinis and a couple of the other guys were like oh let me try that as well and that so it started to like pick up a little ground there and then like the next you know a couple weeks later we're in houston and uh did the same thing where uh you know our good friend aaron he was in the room with me we're we're waiting for everyone to show up so we're just sitting there shooting the shit and ordered an espresso martini he goes all right i'll get one too he goes i, I gotta finish it before everyone shows up but i, I can't have them know that like i'm drinking this you know this espresso martini it's, it's too girly and uh 
and like they deliver it, and as soon as the waiter walks out the door, all the entire group walks right in, and he's just like, "Oh, super bitch!" But then, I swear to God, except for two people, there was like over a dozen guys that were like, "What's that?" And like, "Espresso Martin." Like, let's try. It. And then that that was it. That was it. It was wildfire. Doesn't like it. It's an amazing drink. It really is. Yeah, you know, it's it's delicious. It's boozy. It's got some caffeine in it. Like. Um, we have the yeah. international spokesman here, right? The international brand ambassador. Like, what yeah. a 10 out of 10 espresso martini. All right. Gotta have so it, you got to score it like, uh, you have to score it like figure skating, right? There's there's no such thing as a 10 out of 10, because what if someone comes along and does it a little bit better? Sure. Right. But you want to get into the nines. You got to have, it's it's all about the balance, and it's about the presentation. So, like, you know, you, you get one, do it in a martini glass, like, for the love of God. Like, if you, you know, uh, what is it, like, the kind of Manhattan, like, the curved one at the top, that works, too. But if you don't have that, like, to, that's, you're already, you're already losing. You're already losing. Um, if, you, if you're using, like, shitty vodka or, like, that, where, like, it gets, like, that alcohol taste after, that's a no-go. Um if you add now here's the, here's the trick some places will add baileys into it and that can like it could go either way because if you have a really strong uh espresso flavor and you come pretty hard with like you know any simple syrup or whatever that they add in you know the baileys is too much but if you take out some of the you know the simple syrup but you replace it with baileys it can actually provide a really nice balance and it ramps up the booze factor just a little bit without overpowering it so the balance between all the ingredients has to be there um, as far as, you know, Kahlua and, you know, the espresso, the vodka, et cetera. Right. And then too much foam is a killer. Like right. if, if it's more than a quarter foam, we got a problem. We got a problem. And, and I won the other night. I was like, oh, where's the foam at? Oh, she didn't, man. you know, so it, wasn't, it was good, but it's still, you know. Yeah. The, the, yeah. You, you need like, again, it's like that quarter, quarter kind yeah. of little thing of foam. Yeah. A quarter inch of foam is perfect because too much foam, and you're like, where's the drink? But the worst ones never have any foam. The absolute worst espresso martinis I've ever had never had any foam. Yeah, you know, just a little bit of foam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, if, and here's the thing. If you don't garnish the foam, like, you're not even breaking into the nines. Got to put, like, either some espresso beans on top. I'll do – I've had some where they do, like, a, a cinnamon, like, they dust it with cinnamon, or they dust right. it with, like, some chocolate powder, or even crushed espresso beans. Like, crush the beans and dust it across. That all works. That all plays. You know, as long as it looks good. But, yeah, the balance has to be there. It's all about the balance. There you yeah. go. Top rating. Yep. All the ingredients right there. Got top rating. Yeah. Espresso martini. <laughs> yep. Exactly. So, I, I'd say when people have asked me, like, where's the best one that I've ever had? Um, I think my go-to answer is probably at, it's gotta be at Nobu. Like that's, that's a, that's a classic one for me. Um, I don't know that I've had one that was like necessarily that like blew it out of the water. Like that's always like, it's a reliable, like I know I'm always getting a good one there. Um, there's a few spots I've been to where like I've had really good ones, but then it hasn't, you know, you go back and it's not quite the same. So yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. I gotta have some fun with it, man. Of course, of course, got to enjoy it. Got to enjoy yeah. the life. Absolutely. So yeah. we, we got a couple minutes left. In closing, mm -hmm. you know, I want to just ask you, you know, our within our network, we thought about being a professional. And yeah. I wanted to just get, we, I think all we can sit here for hours and, and off, run off a list. If there's maybe one trait to mind, that you that really is at the forefront of your mind in terms of what a professional mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the audience i mean you yeah it's a loaded question there's so many different ways you could go with that i think you know everybody knows the obvious ones you know of you know be respectful you know you like do good work work hard etc cetera, etc cetera. i think the bit the one one word that people will miss out on oops my light goes off in the background there um, the, 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 they'll miss out on is going to be composure. And what I mean by that is not just composure of the, like being, you know, composed under pressure, but composure when you're dealing with people, you know, always being able to be, you know, level-headed, 
so that you're not flying off the handle because it's really easy. And I, and I don't mean in a negative way. I mean, in a positive way as well, it's very easy for people to fall into kind of that manic, like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And they just start, they're going, 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 and they don't really stay composed and look like, okay, is this, you know, like, you know, you can make the grandest of plans, but if you're not composed when you do it, it's going to be a lot harder for you to follow up on it. And that I think is a, a mark of a professional that, you know, they're, they're grounded and realistic and they stay composed at all times. Um, you know, even when they're excited, they're able to, you know, be on point because I mean, we're the, the deal that I'm working on right now, um, you know, out here in Vegas that, you know, you're familiar with the amount of times, like how easy it's been to be like, Holy shit, this thing is, it looks amazing. And yeah, it, but I mean, you get too emotionally attached to it. And I mean, today, like I had a whole complete game changer, complete game changer on new development. It's just like, ah, cool. I, you know, we're never like as excited as, you know, we might be, I never, you know, put it in my brain that like, it was a for sure thing, you know, now it may not be, now it may, it, it could be, it may not happen or it could end up being better than it was before. Either way, it's just, you know, staying composed the whole way through and, you know, being, right. being balanced in everything in your decision making. I think that's, that's something that, you know, will get lost on people sometimes. That's, that's an excellent point. And you may, it makes a lot of sense because you, you, either way, you got to stay in it and focus, right? Focus on what you're doing. And because you never know, it's, it's really mm -hmm. true. That, that's a perfect analogy. Like when you're dealing with a business deal, you, you just never know. It could be going this way, and then it takes a left turn. And then, and then, yep. and then the sun it comes out. The sun's going to come out tomorrow. You still got to work and see what you can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, yep. that's a great, great point. That's a great yeah, point. And, and not just in business deals, it carries over to people as well. Like how many times? How many times have you met someone in your life and you're like, "Oh, this dude, this can change my life." Like knowing this person, they're they're so great at this, they're the best at this, they're da 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 da, da and like go down the list, and it's you know, it's the same. It, it, it almost seems too good to be true. Yeah, but usually it is, right? And okay, a lot of the times, right? More recently, I found it's not necessarily too good to be true, but if you temper your expectations, you stay composed about, all right, cool. They're, they're checking all the boxes so far. Right. 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 I'm, uh, you know, it's not just waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's the, you know, making sure that you are, you know, being realistic about who it is that you're dealing with and what those expectations are. And, you know, are you projecting what you want someone to be onto them rather yeah. than, realistically assessing who they are because you're setting both of you up for disappointment if you don't right. and again being composed and in control of your emotions absolutely that's mm -hmm. a great really great point yeah fact, many times get ahead of yourself sometimes I realize shit you know what i mean like this mm -hmm. wasn't a person ended up being less than i thought and it's a life lesson it's a life lesson mm -hmm. I mean, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate your time, Ian. I'm not going to keep... Dude. Just to to you. Is anything else you want to share? Anything? Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I, you know, I... I many more? What's that? <laughs> yeah, we hope to do many more G Lives, and we have a lot of talent around us, but I thank you for joining me on this first one. Yeah. yeah of course, my, my pleasure. No, this has been... Uh, this is fun. I've never done one of these before. This is... Uh, Legitimately, actually, probably my first like public kind of interview thing. I usually have stayed away from all this kind of thing. Um, I'm not big on like the self promotion, which I know working with uh, Andrew Bass for like marketing and things like that is. I know it drives him insane a little bit, but it also makes it a little easier for him because he can just say, "Hey, do this," and I'm like, "All right, I'll have to see it." Yes, boom. But uh, but not if you know anyone who's watching. If you guys got any questions, um, you know, hit me up on you know. In Telegram or here on Instagram, uh, especially um, inbox is open. And you know, if you want to check out the course or any of the other you know kettlebell stuff I have out on Gumroad, iClarity.Gumroad. Um, other than that, I mean, thank you for having me, man. This is fun. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the next one you do. All right, the yeah, tactical kettlebell strength is a phenomenal program. If you have it, DM Ian and get it. It's it's short. It's a video program that's incredible, and. Yeah. Ian, of knowledge just great great 
you know, incredible guy. So thank you again for, for being on. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Take care, Take care everyone. <laughs>